Welcome to an introduction of the DXL editor for doors made by Sodius. Uh, the intent of this application is to make editing DXL files as productive as possible. And for that, as you can see, we've chosen the Eclipse uh, development environment as the perfect environment to gain the productivity that we desire. Like all Eclipse development, uh, things are centered around the notion of projects. You can see here that I've got a, four different projects. Uh, one of them just links in folder, uh, a folder, a DXL folder from the doors environment. So here we see all of the, the doors uh, included DXL from our installation directory. So it's a link to other link to files existing on a directory. Other files uh, such as games are directly located here in our project. One of the things we'll do is open up a file. <coughs> here you can see uh, there is the color syntax highlighting that we would expect. So comments are in blue. There's all types of keywords which are now in red. Plain text, strings, uh, as I said, are in blue. And you can scroll through and look at the, at the entire contents of your file here in the, the one view. You may have noticed at the same time we opened up uh, this main file. To the bottom left, there's an outline view which now shows us the list of all of the functions defined in this file. It's sorted, and here it is not sorted. So now we're seeing the order in which it's defined. So we can easily go through and jump directly through any of the functions that are there. So let's look at do hit. Having files grouped together in a project uh, means that somehow they're related and that they will uh, use functions to find another one. So if we open up another file, we can go through and we can now refer to things in a different file. So one thing we have is code assist. So as I here I type control space to get code assist so I can see the list of all of the keywords inside of doors, any of my functions to find anywhere else in this project. So right away I can go and say do hit and here I see this with the accompanying comment that was put in the original source file. So I can select this. Here I can get the hover help so now I can see as I rest on top of this function I can see the actual function documentation to understand what it's supposed to do. I can also click F3 and get originally er, uh, taken to the original spot where this declaration has happened. So now I can easily navigate between the files and understand how they're related and what calls, uh, what the functions are actually doing. Part of the help, if I go back to my tile, not only here are we getting, in the code assist, are we getting uh, doors functions themselves uh, or other operations, but we also have templates. So if I look in here in my templates, uh, for instance, in our preferences, we can choose the colors as you would expect for the various color coding that we've seen. The templates, now we can add new templates and add a new template which will create uh, a very sample template. The description, um, add some sample text. And now I can put whatever pattern of code I'm looking to put in. There's all sorts of variables I can use as well inside of this pattern. So here I can say, the pattern is going to be, we'll put um, if, then, and why not uh, else. It's not really a pretty code, but it's just to show you what it does. So here we can see what that will look like. So now when I'm back here and I say, let's put sample, hit control space. Now I can see my sample template with my description and what that text is going to be. When I click, I now see exactly that text I put in that template. This is great for those helper functions which you use over and over again. <coughs> That's all of the basic text editing type functions that you would expect from any type of text editor or navigation environment. We actually go one step further and give you also compilation uh, of your code. So as here, when I type here and I type something like uh, some garbage, what I can see is I get an error. So as soon as I hit save, I hit control S for save, I've now compiled and now I see I have an undeclared variable, variable, which of course tells me I've got some error. You'll notice as well that a red X has been put uh, on the function itself. 
on the file and on the containing project. This problems view can then show you the problems from all of the files in one project down to an individual file itself. So you can filter the view and see exactly where your problems are coming from. <coughs> Another thing you can do is uh, view this and look at the changes. So as this is being Eclipse, you can share the project if you need to. You can go to Team and share the project in your CVS or any other source code control system you would like. Uh, or natively in Eclipse, what you can do is come through and say, let's compare what I just did with my local history. So now I can see all the different versions of this file and I can double click and now I'm going to compare my two versions. First I see that the difference that I have is in a function called start timer and I can see here that what I've done is added this piece of text here in this code so I can choose to either accept the old version or leave the new version and I can iterate through all the changes uh, in my file. Let's reload that. Another thing we can do is execute the file. Uh, I will here execute our blackjack file. So what I can do is say run as DXL. Now you'll see here that uh, it's saying that there's waiting for user input on a window. So let me find this window that just opened up. Here it is. Now it's open up the application. I can go ahead and execute and, and run the application as I want and close it. Etc. So now I'm able to run exactly the same code here inside of the doors environment to see how it executes. As you would expect as well, I could also do certain things like um, add that same error. And now when I run, it tells me errors exist, you still want to run. I hit proceed. And what I get is a listing of the errors. So I'm saying executing, here's an error on line 717. I click, it takes me directly to this point and shows me where the error is and gives me a list if I go back to my problems view of exactly what was reported as an error from doors. So I can of course remove that and rerun my DXL. And of course now it runs and we're back playing blackjack. So I think that is a good overview of the various functions. There's not only text editing functions. There's also code assist that goes and interprets the files that are being used so that you can uh, remove errors in calling functions to find in other files and allows you to execute and bring back those errors directly into the DXL, DXL editor itself instead of going back between your text editor and doors to execute.